I don't think most people know about the Korea town in New Modern. Otherwise, I think it would be even busier than it already is. Basically, it has a similar concept to Chinatown in central London. But in this case, it's Korean restaurants, supermarkets, shops, and more. Here, you can find some Korean items that are extremely hard to find in the rest of the UK. It's a lot smaller than Chinatown in central London, though. But it's pretty good if you want to get some decent food or if you just can't be bothered to wait in long queues for restaurants, shops, then this might be a better option. I think it's expanding every year. I see new shops pop up here and there. I cannot read Hangul or the Korean alphabet, so I'm not sure if this cafe does karaoke or live music. Actually, most of the Korean shops or cafes have signs in both English and Hangul. That's how you can tell them apart from the other shops. For the restaurants, there are a few good options. Some are non-Korean, but since my aim was to have a taste of Korea, so I went to a Korean restaurant. I got lucky because as soon as I got a seat, a lot more people started coming in and others couldn't even get a seat. So that's always a good sign that the restaurant is good. The menu was quite long. I find it hard to choose when a menu has a lot of items. I ended up ordering some tea and some Korean glass noodles. The tea never came, but the noodles did come. This was actually my first time having glass noodles. The noodles came with some side dishes, which was pretty cool. A good deal for the prices actually, because the noodles were only £13. The side dishes were kimchi and other pickled vegetables. And how did they taste? I think my reaction says it all. I would go to this restaurant again. The service was slow, but the food was worth it. I guess the food has to be really good because a lot of Koreans also live in New Modern and they would know the authentic taste. So they would criticize these restaurants if they were not serving good food. Over 10,000 Koreans live in the county of Surrey in the UK, especially in the town of New Modern. It's the county with the most Koreans in all of the UK. Both North and South Koreans live here. So yeah, you heard me right. North Koreans also live here. For those of you who don't know much about North and South Korea, I would try to simplify the background as much as I can. Basically, they used to be one country, then they split into two, North and South Korea, after the Korean War in 1953. They're still technically at war, just under ceasefire. I don't want to get too political. There are other channels who specialize in explaining conflicts. I will just give you the basics on how the two countries are now so different since the war. In South Korea, there's free movement of people. In North Korea, the citizens are not allowed to leave the country, not even to see their relatives in South Korea. North Korea is very secretive and doesn't export much of its culture the way South Korea does. So the popular Korean dramas are all from South Korea. Samsung, Hyundai, BTS, these are all coming from South Korea, not the North. I think the most popular thing coming out of North Korea is the leader, Kim Jong-un. So if the North Koreans are not allowed to leave North Korea, how are they in New Modern? Well, it means the North Koreans living in the UK are either defectors or are North Korean government employees. The North Koreans are not even that many in Surrey. Out of the 10,000 Korean residents, only about 700 are North Koreans which means most Koreans you've met are probably South Koreans. So what made a lot of Koreans settle in Surrey, specifically in New Modern? Well, oh. there are a lot of factors because of that. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is that it used to be the former residence of the South Korean ambassador. I think this was in the 70s. Samsung also based its UK headquarters here until 2005. So I guess when they established the Samsung office, some employees were Korean and they stayed. Apparently, this town had a really bad economy and they revived it by opening shops. These days, it has a lot of Korean things which makes it easier for more Koreans to settle in this area. Supermarkets, restaurants, shops, community groups, and if the Koreans are not very fluent in English, the shops also have Korean signs. 
the community groups can also be one of the main reasons because they can help people integrate into society. In this Korean town, I actually do shop in some of the supermarkets, especially this one, the Seoul Plaza. I guess it gives you access to a lot of Korean products that are normally not found in British supermarkets and I get to try the products from Korea without having to travel there. I mean, I do want to visit Korea of course, but I don't think I can try everything in one trip, considering I can only travel at a maximum time of two weeks because of work. The supermarkets also sell products from other Asian countries, so they're not limited to Korean products only. I was trying to record while shop at the same time. This is a skill I really need to practice. I also got lucky in this supermarket. Most of the Korean supermarkets don't allow filming. I actually went to another bigger supermarket and they even have signs not to film. They are really strict about it. Even if you're just videoing the products, not the staff. So I left it because I wanted to show you what is available. I don't know why they're very strict, but I'm guessing it's because some of the customers may be from North Korea and they don't want to be seen anywhere online as they could get in trouble with the North Korean government. So to prevent this, they just don't allow filming in general, or maybe there are other reasons. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. It looks like the Korean supermarkets have so much variety. I've heard some Koreans say that the UK Korean supermarkets have limited variety, so I don't know how much choice there is in the supermarkets in Korea. For me, this is a lot. When I go shopping to a Korean supermarket, I always end up buying things I don't need, but I buy because they were available and looked interesting. Like this time around, I only wanted to get some noodles, like instant noodles. I ended up with a lot of random items. They looked so interesting and I wanted to try it. I think the packaging is also so good that they make you want to try the products. I think the vegetables are not that different from the ones in the British supermarkets though. I think I can find most of them in Tesco or Asda or something. Here's everything I ended up buying. To be fair, you can buy some of these items in the big British supermarkets. They're just not always available. But if you go to the Korea town, if one supermarket doesn't have it, then the next one will. Kangnam. I like how some of the shop names don't have the Korean alphabet, but you can tell that they're Korean. Like this one, cake and bingsu. I didn't even know bingsu is a Korean dessert, but I did find out after. I actually have been to this cafe a few times, but I'm always getting the matcha cake. This time I thought I should explore a bit more. The menu has a lot of similar items to a typical British coffee shop, just with a little Korean twist. I guess the selling point is the bingsu. I haven't had a chance to try bingsu, but the portion always looks too big. I think it's meant to be shared by two people. This place is always so packed. I actually couldn't get a seat, so I had to take out my order. I don't remember the name of the pastry I bought, but I didn't like it that much. I'll go back to the matcha cake or crepe next time. This thing was dry and had this creamy feeling and not that sweet. I don't know, I just didn't like it. The cafe is always so packed because you can actually do other activities as well in this building. So a lot of people would just wait in the cafe or like get manicures or something. You can actually take photos as well. So they have this little photo booth. It's very handy if you want to take some fun photos with some friends. And the kids were really loving this booth as well because you can actually get some costumes. I mean, not get them, but they're right there. You can accessorize. So, of course, you can look a bit more animated before you take the photos, which is something that kids really love. The mirrors could use some cleaning, though. It's free to take a selfie on the mirrors, but in the actual booth, it starts from £8. The ground floor has the cafe, the nail salon, and the photo booth. The first floor has a few other shops, too. So you get to experience how a few things are done in Korea just in one building. On the first floor, you have the fashion store, a K-pop fashion 
or just cave passion, I suppose. A Thai massage and some salons. The salon doesn't look very Korean, but it probably is Korean. It seemed closed, but then I wasn't going there to do my hair anyway, so I wasn't sure if it was opened or closed. So I guess you can follow Korean fashion trends with this shop. I think they need more cave fashion shops though, like with Korean designers. This shop had some interesting pieces but didn't have that many items and most of it is not really my style so it would be really interesting if more key fashion shops popped up. That way I can find something maybe I would wear. The presentation is great though. I like how they presented everything. It looks like a very fancy charity shop. Maybe it is a charity shop. I just forgot to ask. I always wonder about these shops with a few items. How do they make enough to keep running? I mean, to pay the employees, to pay rent, it's a lot. So I don't know how much you'd have to sell in a day to keep up with the rents and to pay the employees. This is a Saturday as well. Like, shouldn't it be packed with a lot of people buying the items? Because I don't think a lot of people are out during the weekdays. So how do they really do this? But anyway, this building is a pretty cool place to hang out, so check it out when you're in your modern next time.